You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Prison, then getting arrested for murder, like loads of things came and, and things happened. And sometimes when your name's always popping up, a lot of the things that you haven't done, you still get blamed for anyway. As dumb as it sounds, it was like, yeah, when am I going to prison? I can't wait to go to prison. That was that age, do you know what I mean? And then when you, when I was in prison, it was like, wow, I'm in prison. Like, shit's real now, do you know what I mean? Mum come to see man. Obviously, I broke her heart because I'm her only son. I used to rob people, do you know what I mean? I used to skank people. I used to do fucked up shit. I used to kidnap people. And man's not, by any means, man's not here to glorify it. It's just giving you an insight of my life, do you know what I mean? And I've been out for four years. I haven't had not one argument, but more people now want to kill me now that I'm successful than I was on the roads. When people might think, I'd be like, right, yeah, he split up with Little Man or he split up with Dig That. He's actually the problem. But then I think, yeah, Raw, all these people are saying that. Have you had someone to invest 50K into you? Have you had, have, have you had someone that will come and say, I'll invest 100K in you? My daughter could have, um, she could have a fee for a cold and she it could affect her. She could have, do you know what I mean, a crisis. She has to get blood transfusions every three weeks. They, they said to her, um, at five, she could get a stroke. So she had to have her blood transfusions every three weeks. So. Boom, we're on. Yes, my bro. And today's guest, we've got my main man, Bouncer. How you doing, my bro? How are you, brother? Me. Thank you for having me, man. I'm good. Yeah, um, big fan. You know that yourself, brother. Like, I've got nothing but love and respect for you for everything you've achieved. Respect. Kid from the streets, prison, armed robberies, drugs, spent over 10 years, came out, decided to do something about it. Now you're an entrepreneur. Now you're got your own wicked and bad energy drink. Now yeah, man. You've got fights all over the UK. You've got fighters. You're also a manager that's brought some through brought through some fucking great talent. Like no, I respect take my hat off to you, brother. Like, it's unbelievable. And a lot of people might not see that from the side that with success comes a lot of hate, bro. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah, business yeah. and uh, no doubt you'll not care. But first and foremost, how are you? I'm good, you know. I'm fine, but bro. I'm ready for twenty twenty two, planning some amazing things. Um, thank you for having me on the show. And thank you for being a presenter for um Wicked and Bad, do you know what I mean? Um it was very like we appreciate it and I know we've got big plans. Um we're planning already even before this yeah. Sweat, this so yeah man. <laughs> yeah, it's business bro. And like I say, thanks for the opportunity. It's a yeah. different audience for me. I seen that. I want to tap into everybody and anybody. I can sit with any guest, that's when I, I'll show my talent. So yeah. again, thank you also. But I always like to go back to the start of my guest, bro. Where you grew up and how it all began. Yeah, man. Um I was born in Gypsy Hill, um uh, obviously South London. Born in, yeah, King's College Hospital. So, yeah, man, from young, I was raised, like, in Gypsy Hill. Gypsy Hill, moved to South Norwood. Um, and then went to my first secondary school. You know, when it starts from there, Stanley Tech High School for boys, Harris Academy. Um, and growing up, it was, when you're, when you're at that age, is, it was every, nothing wasn't really... Um, it wasn't serious, isn't it? Play in the park. Mum lets you play in the park. Um, I've always been big. I've always been a little fatty. You get me? So. <laughs> Join the club, bro. So, from that age, from young, I think I was always getting them little, sly little bullies. You get me? And I knew from going to like secondary school, I had to like fix up and be a bit more tough. And it was an all boys school. So it was like from there, um, a lot of my friends from my primary school came to the school. And just from the area of being like, the area of Fulton Heath, South North, Croydon. Um, obviously, we linked up with, we made like, we formed like little gangs and that when we was young, but that was more of our family. And a lot of my friends are now, that's like from there, then they're still my friends now. Yeah. What were you like at school? So at school, um, as you can see, I, I, I can't read and write f properly. You get me? My, dyslexic. My, I'm dyslexic. So at school, um, yeah, you would chew it, chew it, bunk off school. Um, you know what I mean? 
muck about in class. I didn't get expelled from school. I, I managed to um, complete school, but I didn't get great GCSEs. And I know my teachers were probably like, well, you're not going to amount to nothing. You're just going to go to jail or, you know what I mean? And that's what happened. But luckily I managed to do a 360. But yeah. Did you feel a lot of pressure because you couldn't read and write? Is that where you felt the bit of extra pressure with the bullying? Were you, were you getting teased and stuff back then? No, I wouldn't say I got teased from like not being able to read and write. But it was, like, it was, just when you're growing up, it's just things that you might you might not have the latest trainers or you know what I'm saying. But my parents always um, provided for me. I was always kind. I was always spoiled. So. I just I just felt like being in an all boys school and an all boys school that I did go to was a bit rough. So I just had to get tough quickly. Do you know what I mean? I had to um, fend for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I had to fend for yeah. myself. What was your mum and dad like? Um, my mum and my my mum amazing. You know, mum my mum was amazing. There for me um, every step in the way um, through hardship, through everything. My dad was. Obviously, my dad was there until, obviously, I don't know, when I was about nine or something. Then, obviously, he um, went away and started um, building a family away and doing his own thing. So, But I still got a relationship with my dad. Did that affect you at a young age? Yeah, of course it affected me because, obviously, when he did go, I started committing crime. I started shoplifting. I started, do you know what I mean, doing petty thefts and things like that hanging around with the local boys around the area. So, um, of course it did, but that's not that, that's not all his fault. Do you know what I mean? It was not all his fault. My mum done what she can for me. Yeah. Do you think you would have reigned in? Because you're very sensible as well, even when you're probably active. I've, I, I speak to a lot of people as well who know you and you're very well respected, but you always had a breadhead on. You always wanted to make money. Do you think if your dad was there, you'd have went down another path earlier on? Um my dad, yeah, my dad is a, he's a, my dad's a multi-millionaire, do you know what I mean? Like, I just say it straight, like, he's been a grafter, he, he's done well for himself. Um, and I've got that, I've got my dad's sort of genes, I've got my dad's genes from, I know I had to make money from school, I used to sell sweets, I used to do, I used to have shubs, shubs on, like, parties when I was young, do you know what I mean? And everyone used to come and play, pay two pounds to get in. So I've always had that business mind, but I think I went down the route of like, then it was like selling drugs, robbery, robbery, and I did like have patience and like just, just do things right, do things the correct yeah. way. Try to fit in a bit because you never had the father figure there. You felt you needed a brotherhood. You yeah. tend to see that a lot of people form a gang because it's they feel love, they feel yeah. wanted, so they're willing to do anything just to be part of that gang. Definitely. What was the first time you ever got in trouble? I think the first time I got in trouble, uh, I think it was criminal damage. Yeah, smashing a window. Local smashing yeah, a window. Stuff. Yeah, man, got cautioned by the police. What did your mum say? Yeah, I got beaten. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaican household, yeah, there's, no, there's no, you're getting beaten. Yeah. Get me, so I got beaten, but mm. yeah, man. Is that what it kind of started and escalated for you? Kind of started from there, escalated, um, shoplifting, do you know what I mean? From shoplifting to robbery, from robbery to selling drugs, from selling drugs to carrying a bladed, bladed article. Do you know what I mean? From carrying a bladed article to robbery, like, do you know what I mean? Going mm -hmm. to prison, then getting arrested for murder. Like, loads of things came and, and things happened. And sometimes when your name's always popping up, a lot of the things that you haven't done, you still get blamed for anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's because a lot of the stuff... You do get away for they just want to nip you on something so they'll just make up shit and plant you at a place yep. where they'll force something on you but it's all part and parcel of it we, we moaning complain when we get done for something we didn't do but yet yeah. we get away with so much as well so it kind of yeah. always balances itself it out it definitely does when was your first sentence uh, my first sentence was 2007 so 2007 um, 15 years ago yeah that was my first prison sentence and that was for conspiracy to rob a secure call um, box so yeah how long did you get four years do two how was that when your mum comes up and visits you when it's your first sentence yeah it was horrible wasn't it yeah. um, and I'll be honest with you the age that I was at I just knew I was going to prison so it was like how as dumb as it sounds it was like yeah when am I going to prison I can't wait to go to prison that was that age do you know what I mean and then when you, when I was in prison it was like wow I'm in prison 
like shit's real now, do you know what I mean? Mum coming to see you, man. Obviously, I broke her heart because I'm her only son. So she's been there for me through thick and thin. Yeah, that's the only thing because one man leaves and then it's a son leaves, basically. And it's hard for a mother. But even that there, you were saying that you wanted to go to prison, it's, it's, you feel as if you're earning stripes. It's so deluded yeah, thinking, mate, that it's why crazy. You, we think that cause trouble, cause harm, because it tries to get his respect for people. It's fucking nuts, the method of thinking that. But the, how did you do your first sentence? Was it YOs, Young Offenders? Yeah, it was YOs, but my first sentence was a bit tough because um, I went to a YOs. As soon as I went to the YOs, I had a fight. I was, and the fight that I had, like, it caused such a big impact. They stored me up to um, a, a, a prison, like adults prison, and I was only 17. So, they, so... I remember, I remember it like yesterday, they stored me up and I remember the guy was like, oh, welcome to the big boys. And this adult's prison, I swear to you, there was cockroaches all over the cells. There was everything I was sharing a cell with a drug addict. And then that's when shit hit the fan. I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> like what, what am I doing? I need to get out. How long was it before you were back in once you got out after two years? Nine months. So after nine months doing the same thing, came out. Then obviously went to prison for selling drugs. So like this time was like, but where we had so much gang issues and so much issues with um, the rival gang, it was like bare, lo loads of intelligence. The police had searched one of my um, safe house, house, safe houses, waited for me to come back, seen me in there, arrested me back in prison. Did you just see that cycle coming? Did you just accept that life at that age? Yeah, I just, I just, I went to prison three times and I'd done big chunks, big prison sentence every single time and I was only out for a little bit of time. So it, it, I just accepted it. And when I was out, uh, my life, I was living my life on the edge. Do you know what I mean? We were living, we, the way how we was living, it, it's not normal when we, when we think back and we, we laugh. I talk to my friends, we laugh about it. Like, do you remember when we done this? Do you remember when that happened? But like looking now is like wow. Yeah, it's fucking crazy thinking, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What were you doing then? Armed robberies, security call vans, yeah, cash machines. Yeah, we was known for that was 14 Eve boys. We're known for robbing um trays, um security call vans. Um, do you know what I mean? And we weren't really shotters. We weren't really we didn't really sell drugs like that, but we did, but we but it was more, yeah, armed robberies and and that. Yeah. When did you get done for an armed robbery? 2007, I got four years due two, so I've done two years, come out 2009, then I was out for nine months. And, and then, then what was that sentence? I was, and then, I, then drugs, so I got done for possession with intent to supply. Then I then I got, I've done two, two years, two months, because I had to do some license. And then what was your last one? And then my last one was robbery and drugs. Yeah, did you get double figures? Um, yeah, I got 11 years. Yeah. So I got 10 years for the um, drugs and then obviously they had to give me consent but they couldn't slam me with big years because it's not in the public interest so they gave me six months um, consent for the robbery so it made it 11 years so I ended up doing five years seven months what are you thinking then when you get you're getting double figures um, obviously my daughter's um, just being born my daughter's got sickle cell enough's enough like this is it now like I can't keep on falling into the same trap going back to prison, going in and out of prison and um, breaking my mum's heart, do you know what I mean? And I'm just in and out of prison and this is just my life. So I just felt like I was just in a mad cycle that I couldn't get out. And every single time I was getting more and more and more years, but I'm just getting big years. So when so when it came, I went to, I think I went to prison 2012 or 2013, January. And then I come out, oh, 18, oh, 18 March or something like that. So it was like crazy years. And mentally, like that that prison has affected me in a big way, like with my mental, you hear me? So, mental health? Yeah, yeah. What's sickle cell? So sickle cell is like a blood disorder. Um, like a lot of like predominantly black people get in a black community. And it's like, my daughter could have, um, she could have a fee for a cold, and she, it could affect her. She could have, you know what I mean, a crisis. She has to get blood transfusions every three weeks. They, they said to her, um, 
at five, she could get a stroke. So she had to have her blood transfusions every three weeks. So. How is that then when you're getting near enough a life sentence and then you, your daughter's born, she's got that rare disease. Is it rare disease? I take yeah. It? Yeah. And then you're not, you can't really be there. That's the yeah. thing that is the fucking heartbreaking thing. Look, we course. don't care about the damage we've caused back in the day. We only think about the, f the people yeah. that we leave behind but we cause all the pain that we, it's, it's conflict as well that we yeah. cause but when you're doing that sentence how hard is that for you then to say nah, that? it's crazy hard and obviously I have to give my daughter's mum all props like she's an amazing mum like what she's done like and how what she's done just to raise such a beautiful girl and do you know what I mean she's a strong girl so I, we thank God that nothing serious has happened, you know what I mean, and 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 the blood transfusion is working. But yeah, man, it, that's when enough was enough for me, and and it's time to fix up. How did you get through your sentence? Was it just try to change the mindset, try to break old habits, and um, yeah, because like obviously growing up in Fort and Heath, I was like one of the main brothers from my ends that would make sure my ends, my people are good. So you know what that comes with. So in prison, some of my sentences, I used to always fight. I was in, I've been in a block all three months down the block straight. Do you know what I mean? Getting getting blamed for this, this and that. So um, my last sentence, I became like a, a gang's peer mentor, and I was trying to like just mediate and trying to keep calm in the jail and just trying to just work my ticket to open jail. How did you do that? Did you see when you're trying to change in prison? Did you ever feel you were getting more tested? No, I'm not in prison because I would just smack my nut. Like that's it's, <laughs> I'd just, I'd just be on. But but at the same time, it's like people respect you for like how you were. They might think maybe you're in the prison, so everyone's trying to work their own angle or a ticket. But at the same time, it's like people respect you because they know you from that area. Or they know you, you you used to. Do you know what I mean? So they don't when you're when you're a household name. You're not a you're not a victim. Do you know what I mean? So there was no I had no issue. There were no issues. Obviously there was fights and that, but there was my prison sentence was lovely. Yeah. How many prisons were you in in that ten stretch? In the ten stretch, I think I went to like five five different prisons. Was that for like category? Yeah. B, a, so B, B, B cat local, yeah. B, yeah, yeah, C, C. D so just cat. to try and keep the head down, try and make something of your life and try and get out there to provide for your daughter? Yeah. That, like literally like and then obviously going to open jail it taught me just how to um upsell how to talk to the customers um they gave me a chance i was a manager in a timpson's brock branch key cutting shoe repairs and i had to and then no one had to go back to the prison to sleep in the prison and wake up in the morning to go to work and then to receive my bit my paycheck and do you know what i mean just to know that every month from receiving a paycheck it it, it felt um, good. How was that for a bad man to be robbing banks, to be selling drugs, to then be working in Timpsons for a minimum wage, getting told what to do? How was that right at the start? Not really knowing that side of things, how it works, how it functions, and and working basically for a living, yeah. an honest living. Yeah, I got I got a second chance. I was grateful. I, I, Timpsons, what they're doing with inmates, um, amazing. Do you know what I mean? Amazing, James Timpson amazing what they're doing and um to even receive that paycheck and to understand it and to value my money was like do you know what i mean it humbled me mm -hmm. so i used to do a lot of short lifting as well and i still get into shops and i think man i could steal that <laughs> 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 what, what was it like in terms of when money and that's coming in was there ever any temptation because i get temptation no. so many times but i don't act on it yeah but i see thing, i see things and i think yeah. fuck it's always in the back yeah. of my mind but for yourself coming through and Try to change and getting a job and working with money and I'd imagine secure yeah. money. The secure code man, coming in, yeah. The, the secure code bots. I was a manager in my own shop, yeah. So it was just me. I'm in jail for robbing the secure code bots. The secure code bots used to come to my shop. Used to open up the bots. I used to do the paperwork. I used to put the money in the bots. They used to close it, and that's it. And you don't even know that I'm in prison for robbing that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like for me, it like wow, like look look how far that I've kicked, I've come. So, um, and so with me, I just believe in karma. Like, um, I used to rob people, do you know what I mean? I used to skank people. I used to do fucked up shit. I used to kidnap people. And man's not, by any means, man's not here to glorify. It's just giving you an insight of my life, do you know what I mean? And, and just bad karma came on it, bad karma. 
prison, prison, something bad happened, health. So, do you know what I mean? So it's like, for me, even now, you always have to treat people straight. Always, always have to do things with a clean heart. And just leave it to God. If someone does you dirty, just leave it to God because I just believe that that calm is real. Yeah. Whether you're active or whether you're doing a clean heart, there's always going to be chances that are always going to try and fuck you over no matter what you do. Being in a legit business, what I've found over the last three, four years, there's more people trying to fuck me now than I was when I was active, which well, is well. fucking weird. And, you, and it, I don't know if that's test from God. Test, bro. Every day is test for me. It's every day is test. Remember, Major, remember being in prison, you're in prison and then you're not used to the outside world, coming out of the outside world and then the projects that you're working on, people are noticing you're getting a following quickly and then on the top you have to deal with internet trolls but at the same time in your head, this is my demons saying, bro, I would just shoot in your face but do you know what I mean? That's how that, but I will never do that in real life but, but this is how the person that was me so every single day I have to rethink things and look at things and look at myself in the mirror and be like, you can't take it in that serious. But then then you, you work on projects, you have the Wicked and Bad brand or you, I have an artist and they're doing well and then you have people whispering in people's ears and then all of a sudden, like what I said to you off the camera, like I've been, I've been out for four years, I haven't had not one argument, but more people now want to kill me now that I'm successful than I was on the roads. And I have to scratch my head and be like, this person's not talking to me or this person's talking about this or this person. But why? What are you? What? What is it? Like, why Why are you upset with me? you like, what? what? Because I'm just doing well. Yeah. So. There's always going to be envy and you tend to see, weak people see silence as a, as a weakness as well. So when people go silent, it's not because they're weak. People just want to change their life. And sometimes going silent as well, people plan a revenge, but people should never try and push buttons for a sleeping bear as well or a sleeping giant because yeah, everybody's still got that fucking breaking point we go Everyone's people try to back, get back into a corner and people just snap no matter yeah. who the fuck you are like, I've seen the weakest men snap and beat the biggest and I've seen the biggest yeah. break and it's it's just a mad society but everybody's brain is different people can't see change is a good thing from others people can't go do you know what let's bring this man up let's raise people up when they're doing well it's, yeah. it's mad and even Scotland Scotland's a billionaire capital of Europe yeah. one in two people get bullied so when you're successful, people hate it. Yeah, like I said earlier, because you shine a light and they're missed opportunities. It's not that they're, they hate you, it's just envious of that. Why can't I change? Why can't I do what they do? Why can't I raise the bar? Why can't I provide for my family a legit living? It's, everybody's got that in them to make goodness. Everybody's got them in, in it to make change. Everybody's got it in them to make legit money, but they can't because everybody try and take the easy shot. No, but, 100%. And, and, and for me, it's like, for me, is, is man's community, man's culture, man's black culture, man's community. They bring each other down. They like they, No one don't want to see each other do well. Do you know what I mean? We have blog pages that are predominantly black owned and they're black owned and all they want to do is post um, triggering stuff and then man's own black people and they're there crushing man. Do you know what I mean? And this, is, and this is what man has to go through. And then, then down the line, they'll be like, oh, support a black business. But for me, it's to support any business. You get me? Because it's not, you. It, 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 these are the same people. They, 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 they don't even, they might love you for 60 seconds, but they hate you for a year. You know what I mean? And it's just one of them ones, yeah. but you just have to keep on going. And for me, as long as, if, if, as long as I'm inspiring the, the youth and that's what I'm there for. I'm not there for no grown ups. I'm, I'm there for the youth. I'm trying to let them, tell them like, listen, if you're on the roads, trust me, when you go to jail for long, no one's not really there for you. No one don't care about you. Do you know what I mean? So let's just change our lives around and just try to work on other things and be happy and change your crowd of friends. So when you were in Timpsons, did they, how did your friends treat you? They was fine. Like, um, do you know what I mean? When I was in Timpsons, um, I always big up, I always big up Crepton Corner and I'll big up Wheeze, I'll big up these um cause these these people, they helped man a lot. Like I got to see a lot of the world that when Crepton Corner is touring the guy in festivals, I'm when I'm out on homelies, I'm going, I'm experiencing it. And my friends, they were supportive. You get me? Yeah. So so they didn't look at me no different. And in Timpsons, I was I, I was working on other projects, you know me? I was working on things, I was working on work. Um, opening up my own events company, which I did from prison. Do you know what I mean? And Crypt helped me and I, I bought a lot of artists that was um, popular then. Do you know what I mean? So um, that that was like my breakthrough and that was like, that was not even my breakthrough, but that was like a little taste or into, yeah. yeah. How did your relationship start with them? 
Are they my brethren from? They're the ones from the rose. Like Conan's been jailed. That's that was my soulmate. Yeah, he's proper, I mean? isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. proper. I've spoken and to a few people. He's, yeah. yeah, people don't know. I don't know if people know, but he has, yeah. he's back in the day. He was proper. Yeah, there. come yeah. on, get me. But yeah, they don't know that. Dude. They just think he's a music don But little that you know, yeah, you get yeah, me. He's but could, but you understand. Most of the people that. Or was ruthless or was on the streets. All of us are respectful people. We ain't got nothing to prove. We don't have to go on like we're someone on the internet. That's not, we're not, we're just here trying to just cut you, create energy drinks. Do, do you know what I mean? Try yeah. to be successful because we don't want that life. We don't want no issues with no one. Yeah, because they give you a shout out with the mobiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah, was that yeah, feeling? Yeah. I, that was a mad feeling and the whole jail, you get me banged the Yeah, you were in the jail that. when yeah, they done yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a, that was a mad feeling. Do you know what I mean? Um, that was a magic fan. Just to see what they've done and just to see that the help that they've given, man. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, man's had to graft. You get me? It's not it's not easy to, to find an artist or you, man's had to do, but but it's added value. Do you know what I mean? And man's very grateful for their help. How was that? How you, did you get treated when obviously everybody's watching the TV and yeah. people don't... Look, if you're not in that kind of world, when you yeah. see you see celebrities, you do put them on a pedestal. Yeah. But if, especially if you're in, a lot of yeah. the men in fucking prison have been in prison their whole life, so they don't know what it's like. But if somebody's on TV and they're shouting your name, man, you must have been fucking yeah buzzing. I was, I, was bu I was buzzing. I was like, raw bros remembered, man. Do you let me? Man's all the way down here. They remembered, man. So yeah. And fair play for doing that. Cause a lot, a lot of people would have give no. shout out to anybody in prison. No, They'd be no. too concerned about that. Yeah, their brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and uh, yeah that's good but so when you got out Timson's what strategies did then did you put into place because you've only been out what four yeah, years four years I've and been look out. what you've fucking achieved it's unbelievable oh, blessings, yeah it's blessings. unbelievable bro thank you my brother. take my hat off to that what, what's been the steps for you then the last four years from being a bit of a loose cannon to yeah. then going do you know what man I need to take responsibility for my life and take the reins and not just change my own life but be there for my daughter yeah um, do you know what obviously I got into music management from coming out Timpsons, um, and we created a brand, Play Dirty Parties, me and Krypton Conan. So uh, just learning the ropes, you know what I mean? Like even when you're trying to reach out to um, producers or people from the labels or people from the industry and they're blanking you, just learning how to take rejection in the sense of like, okay, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go down this avenue. I'm going to go down this avenue. And the fact that we created such something so special with um, the artist that I was managing, dig that. It was obviously I'm the first manager to chart a draw song top 20. And when I came into the game, they said that draw will never chart. Do you know what I mean? And we've opened up doors for um, artists now to always be in the charts for artist managers to come through and have a, and have something to um, talk about and voice their opinion and grow the culture. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, and I'm very grateful to even, do you know what I mean? Share that with that artist and with the people that was on the remit. Krypton Cone and K Trap, so and these are all my close people. Then, yeah, I know you spoke about it before, but when you had dig that, what age was he? 18, 19? Yeah, 18. Only a kid, man. Yeah, like, kid. When you're 18, 19, you're out fucking robbing banks and selling drugs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know there's been a fallout, and, but at the time, when you've got somebody that's popping, that's you've got somebody that's is yeah. selling records, and you yeah. kind of put the drill scene kind of on the map, man. Like, yeah, man. It's unbelievable. And to do that independent and take something out of the charts, very first single. Very what? first, and yeah. that was the team that you got. Man's got a big up. Like at the time, they were called Caroline, the the, the part of Universal. They were just the, the, the distribution. Do you know what I mean? And and listen, they said to us, "Drill will never chart." This is what labels were saying, and we we changed the odds. And from that, it opened up the door. Do you know what I mean? It opened up the door, and look at Drill now. So do you become a threat then? Somebody that's been independent instead of, you know yourself, yeah. when managers and big labels take people on, the kids who sign, man, yeah. even they shout about... I'm a threat now. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a threat now, but um, I I don't, like, I've got, I've got a lot of relationships in the record labels with the presidents and the a and um, even though I, I don't do business with them, but I have my own infrastructure, my own free studios. Do you know what I mean? I have, I have, I have Grammy nominated um, producers right now. That's that's nominated for Doja Cat's album. Do you know what I mean? That they're, they're nominated in a Grammy. That's not happening from no label. No label can't. That's not happening from a label. That's from us, from our infrastructure, from Beans LA. We own. Do you know what I mean? That's that's the um, studios and the producers and the artists that we have. We we still um, we know what we, we know how to develop. So when Dig That song popped. Yeah. What happened? What's it? What happened after that? Dig that. 
obviously Air Force connected. It was doing a hundred thousand views every single day. Bear in mind, I had no idea what YouTube ads was. So we just had a hundred thousand, over a hundred thousand organic views coming in for about four months every day. I kid you not. And from that, it was just the aim was to, okay, cool. We we knew we need we needed to connect another two, three times and then he's he's there, he's an artist because obviously you connect once and then if you don't connect again and you keep a missing, sometimes your hype goes down. So it was just develop and dig that as an artist. Um, do you know what I mean? Um, obviously dig that signed a few deals, a few single deals and just knowing how to get, go into the labels, build up connections with the labels and yeah, just build and dig that as an artist, you know what I mean? I'm dropping these projects. How much did you spend, how much time did you spend with him to build them uh, up? So this is his third song he blew up, do you know what I mean? And and within a year he he was blown. Within within six months to nine months, Dig That was 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 the the hottest draw artist in the game. Do you know what I mean? And then the piece of work that obviously Dig That H created um eight, the eight mile. We done a we done a, a video um remake of the eight mile film and the creativity and that's what made things stand out of the box. Do you know what I mean? With 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 me behind him, with me, do you know what I mean? And 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 him progressing. And there was no contract, nothing signed. Nah, there was no nothing signed. That's that's the, with you know on the streets. And I learned the hard way. Now I can teach people. This is a contract. This is what you need to do. Boom, boom, boom. But there was there was really, why would I do a contract? Get How? Because you seemed heartbroken, especially a man from the streets, knowing what you can do yeah. by getting fucked over. Now people's been fucked over for less and. A yeah. man have died, yeah. mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, how was that for you when it kind of went a different way and you kind of get put to the side? Obviously, um, obviously, it was man was hurt. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? But I just think back. I used to rob people. I used to skank people. I used to do scumbag stuff when I was a kid. Do you know what I mean? So um, I wish my man all the best. There's no animosity there. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but you just have to. You learn, innit? You learn. You get stronger. You get kicked down. A lot of people was happy that happened, you know what I mean? Because you got to put it, put it this way: you got you got a, a drill artist, you got someone that's come from the roads. People have been trying to do what man's been trying to do for tens of years, and man's just come six months later, boom, top twenty. Do you know what I mean? We, we got platinum, silver plat, gold plat, platinum. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. But again, it's a bit of loyalty to the, the no, man who's put the steps there, and that, that for that then I don't like that shit. No matter yeah. who you are, no matter how many apologies you get, people know right from wrong. Like, yeah. wait a minute, he's built me up, he's put money into me, he's invested in me, yeah. I'm going to give him it back. There's not many, and you, as you've learned the hard way. Like, yeah, I've been learning the hard way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've been learning the hard way. And and you know what is, yeah. How much did you lose? 100K, over 100K. Do you know what I mean? I lost over 100K, but, 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 um, do you know what I mean? I kept, I carried on working, and and I could, I could, you could say I made ten times that much. You yeah. get me with with the Wiccan and Bad Brand, so it's fine. Do you see a bit of karma coming back from all the robberies you've done, stealing from people to the end? You know what? You fucked people over. Here's yeah, a bit of your own karma. Of course, I've seen. That's why I give so much back. You get me? I I do a lot of charity work. I give so much back because I always feel that, and like I, I know I have a lot of the younger generation that watch me. So I always have to make sure that I represent them. Do you know what I mean? So um, my thing is just to keep on giving back and you get me, karma's, karma's real. So you just have to charge it to the game when things like that happen. Yeah. You get me, it's just like, okay, cool. Yeah, you can understand. The kids want to look yeah. out for yourself as well, but you can't not forget yeah. the people who's, yeah, of who course. bulge up because there's not many people do that. There's not many people who's got your bank C yeah. vision and C talent because the majority of people don't believe in themselves anyway. So it's planting well. those seeds to say you're good enough, yeah. you can make it. I believe in it. Eventually, it's like affirmations. You eventually yeah. keep repeating that shit. You eventually start believing it. You start believing it. And you know what? It is what I've clocked. And I look at myself in the mirror and then I think, because even as like, when I think, I was like, oh, well, when people might think, I'd be like, right, yeah, he split up with Little Man or he split up with Dig That. He's actually the problem. But then I think, yeah, right, all these people are saying that. Have you had someone to invest 50K into you? Have you had, have, have you had someone that will come and say, I'll invest 100K in you? No one. Have you, have you paid what? Have you paid wages of 20K? Do you know what I mean? And this is a reality. And when you start thinking, 
actually, you haven't had no one to invest this money in me. So, but it's e it's so easy for someone to say X, Y, and Z. Yeah, it's so easy for people to jump on it now. People don't realise where they were at the start. Dark. Zero followers, zero money, zero clout, and, nothing. And, and everything makes sense then. Yeah. Everything makes sense. I can go to you and say, listen, I've got my money, I've got the money, I know I had to brand you. I'm going to put my money into you, but me, you're going to go 50 50. And then everything's fine. And then when, the, when everyone blows up now, oh my God, this guy groomed this person, you've done this, you've done that. What? He was nobody. Everything sound, everything makes sense now. Yeah. So even when I work with people and I say to certain people now, I'm saying, bro, look, look at look at us here. Cause I know I'm a businessman. I say, look at us here. But we we've got a plan in it. And we're not where we are right now, in it. And everything sounds good. The deal sounds good. Everything sounds good. So when you blow up now, what? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So but that's part and parcel of it. Like everybody gets too big for their boots. Everybody thinks it's then them it's created that. And then people start getting people get people people start getting in people's ear. But you see the people that get in people's ear, that's gonna pop down the person. Do you know what I mean? Because they start listening and then you start doing things and you start falling off, you start falling off, and then a year, two years down the line, it's like, Raj, right, why you? did I even do that? Yeah. I shouldn't have done that to my man. You'll see that, that's what I've learned. Just step step back. Just yeah. take two steps back. No, and if they're good that good, then they'll, they can kick on in life. But if not, you'll see them, they all slip after six months, a year, and then they fizzle out. The scary thing is, if you start building st someone up, their credibility's strong. So when they start turning on you, it's not just one comment, two comments, it's fucking thousands of comments. comments. So you can't reply back because you just, so you just need to absorb <laughs> it, absorb it. Yeah. And then after a week or two, it fizzles out, just like fucking anything. And then you, you, get, you do get immune to that. Yeah, you, you get, get immune used, to that. Yeah. You get so used to it that shit but now I'm just staying on my own road I do things myself fuck everybody else I'll give you a platform to create your own shit and, it, and it's up down to you where you go from it some of these podcasts are hitting millions of views but sometimes people think you owe them something I'll be honest with you though um, with the with like both of the people that man worked with they're more my family so you see when you, you, you're hard done by it and things like that happen it, it affects you different in a different way. Do you know what I mean? You can't, sometimes you can, I can shrug it off from X, but this has happened so it can affect you in, in a different way. Do you know what I mean? And think, wow, like, man didn't need to do that or why did man do that? And then you start looking yourself in the mirror and be like, and for me, I'm more like, I'm always like generous. I, I'm always showing love and I'll start being like, this is what it is. Yeah. So cut deeper, do you think? Because it was people so close to you. Yeah, cut deeper, man. Um, on two occasions, I've just I've just come back to social media now. Do you know what I mean? It's important to have a social media break because you can start questioning your stuff. You can start, do you know what I mean? I wake up at 4.30 every single morning since certain things happen, like my PTSD is through the roof. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I, walk, I wake up at 4.30 every single morning. Yeah, we mean you were messaging every, today every, at 5 a.m. Yeah, at 5 a.m. Do you know <laughs> I what I mean? I was up as well. I'm up. I'm ready. And 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 I'll, I'll, I can go sleep early, but I'm up and, and people don't believe why I'm up so late, but I've got my own issues that I'm trying to deal with. Do you know what I mean? I've got my own mental health that I'm trying to deal with. I'm, I'm, I'm fine, but it's like, that's it. But people, they, 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 they would love to see man down. You get me? That's the thing that keeps me going yeah. because there's so many people waiting in the sideline waiting for me to take a drink or take another line of gear or do something stupid. I've got my family to support. Look how well, I'm, I'm not just bumming myself up, but I've done so well the last four years that yeah. I'm scared to stop. I don't want to take the six week break stop. or the three month because I think, what if I fizzle out? I know I won't because I built a platform now I can take yeah. a rest, but I just know when I'm resting or somebody else trying to take my spot and that... 100% yeah. and you can't stop and yeah. I started looking at business and it's like, even these four years, yeah, people say, yeah, you've done amazing, but I've been working at 50%. I haven't even been trying properly. Now, this year, I'm trying properly. I'm looking into the mirror and be like, okay, I need to do this, I need to do this. Even like with the arms fight, my thing was like, all that, I was trying to sell a fight and I know what people don't like, you get me? Obviously we done the video, done the video with the money and people don't like that. You can't post that much money on it. You get me? People don't like that um, naturally. Do you know what I mean? They will just not like you because of that. And it's like, when you're trying, when I'm trying to sell a fight, guys, it's an act. Man trying to sell a fight. Do you know what I mean? And 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 man just trying to build a platform for, for more, this, this will change more and more people's lives. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. now that I'm happy that I, I can say I'm just going to be a promoter, no more fighting for me. Um, 
people will see the miles, they will see the bouncer, they will see the bouncer play dirty. Do you know what I mean? They will see that nice person that's just trying to shift culture, trying to make it grow. Yeah, but the people who do know you, your family and your true friends, your your day ones, they know who you are anyway. But obviously, remember your height, your pop, your, your popularity is growing daily as well. You're yeah. hundreds of thousands of fucking views per day on all pla that. Yeah. That's a lot. So people are always going to judge a lot of people. The majority of people in life are struggling. Yeah. So if you're jumping about with a hundred k, two hundred k off than this, and I know, people I are going to get that. envious. I but, understand. But from anybody that knows, it just knows that it's selling a fight is to create awareness. And people talk as yeah. business, it's still creating more income. But yeah. you live, you learn, and you grow. Just do what's right for you. Like, yeah, you don't yeah. need advice from anybody because what you're doing, there's not many else people, not many people from the streets are doing. So yeah. that's why you've got to give people who's doing that fucking respect. That's no, why I've got nothing but love and respect for no, what you're achieving, you, bro. And that's why when people you. watch this as well. We go, do you know what? People see a different side from people as well. Yeah. People might just watch that video and think yeah. and, and turn off. Yeah. But then when they see interviews like this more in a deeper and nah, cultural work man like. thank you but you know it is it's always someone that's not from my culture like that that will big man up do you know what I mean um, I remember even yesterday one of my friends busy was like bro what you've done and what you've achieved is amazing and no one for the culture no one don't really big you up and say that and I'm, I'm saying to him bro I don't need anyone to big me up I just let my actions do the talking because who are you on a Monday morning I know who I am on a Monday morning I know what I have to do I'm not here for a show I'm not here to waste time I know I know my brain I'm, my brain is the 1% I'm creative I'm a, do you know what I mean I'm a genius I'm a genius I know what to do I know how to develop an artist I know how to de develop fighters I know how to sell a brand I know how to do anything no one can't stop me I might not be good at reading and writing but I'm amazing I know what to do it's a lonely journey though brother isn't it yes bro it's fucking so lonely it's mate. lonely bro because you it's question lonely. it like you say I was up at half four today and I'm thinking right, what are they doing I couldn't be asked either it's like I have to force it as well. And then once I'm up and showered, then I go, right, okay, let's take on a day. What if you get planned? Okay, you've got another 200 miles here. Get that interview. Then you've got another 200 miles after that. Like, and I do, I'm do. i doing this myself, bro. I've got my editor, Steph. And, um, but it's a lonely journey to create something to feed the family. Like, no, of course. It's not that you want the recognition and the pat on the back, yeah. but sometimes it feels fucking no, nice. Do. do you know what I mean? To say, do you know what? Yeah. Well done. And it, it picks you up a bit. Well, do you know what we do, much. James? yourself you're amazing I'm amazing and I see if there's a gap that I can work with you in here and there's a gap that you can work with me we help each other are we in person that's it bro yeah. and we help each other and that's and that's that's what we do to, to grow you know what I mean that's what we do to grow and not even just as a community as someone that can see like and I know I've heard you've spoken about your story you know what I mean and I'm proud of you do you know what I mean and for me to even get behind that just to make sure that you're still on the street do you know what I mean Come on, my bro. Yeah, but that's like you say, man, it's flying. That's what it's all about. And everything's business and opening doors. And you don't know what's round the corner. You don't yeah. know who's watching these interviews that opens door. Maybe no, an artist that's... that's saying, you know what? I, I need somebody to back me yeah. like this man right here. Like, yeah. You just fucking don't know. And no, that's the beautiful course. thing about it. How's your trust issues? Yeah, bro, I don't trust no one. So no, that's now a sad said, place to be. You said, it? oh, I need an artist, or I don't, I don't, I don't invest in people like that no more. I invest in the business. What makes sense for the business? What makes sense for Wicked and Bad? What makes sense for Bounce or an artist? I don't trust anyone. So no artist can be like, oh, put no time. I, I haven't got time to put time in an individual artist. Do you know what I mean? If obviously I'm launching um, my Bounce or Music Club, and it's offering. A service I'm mentoring people I'm this is but my service this is my rates and this is what I do but if it, it but when it comes to oh I'm good at music I don't care how talented you are I'm not putting my effort into that and I know I know I can make you blow I know this I've got I, I know but I'm just focusing on my business because you see the business that's your business this this is what's going to be valued at 100 mil do you know what I mean Wicked and bad, that's what's, and you put your energy into that and t and you focus on that. What's, who, is that gonna, is that gonna snake me? Is that gonna run off with anything? No, because I own it. Yeah, the only person that can hurt you is you. So, see when you were doing that, like, see when you had that, like, and then you, 
obviously now you're valuing you, you're putting a price on you, you. putting a price on your time because you've lost now hundreds of thousands of people who are putting prices and your time and effort into other people. But yeah. if you never done that either, you wouldn't be learning and growing as fast as you are. No, of course. So all these and steps I, I and think, fuck ups I, is perfect. I think for the fuck ups, you yeah. know what I mean? Everyone's in better positions. We're all in amazing positions. So you learn, innit? And you just come back stronger and you have to have time to think and be... And, and reflect and think, okay, where have I gone wrong? Okay, I'm going to work more on this. There's a gap in the market here. And this is the lane that I'm going to go. This is my brand. So when Dig That left, did it, was there ever a heads up to say, look, I'm going my separate ways? Or was it just done behind your back? No, nah, it was just done. It was just done. Do you know what I mean? Through a WhatsApp message and that's it. Do you know what I mean? It was, that's, it was done. And that was that. How long did it take yeah. you to bounce back from that? Uh, six months. It's a fucking long time as well. Yeah, six months. Because that's changing your life because people don't understand as well. Now, it's all right to sit here and be, you know what, it is what it is now, but you changed your life for your daughter. That yeah. money can go to your daughter. So that's yeah. where the envy and the, you know what, I'll kill that cunt. Yeah. It's genuine thoughts, and that's, mate, and like, that's that's the thoughts that, yeah. that's, that's what that's the thoughts that you, you, you think, in it, And yeah. then, you, then you have to look at yourself and be Because like, people okay. are just looking at you thinking it's only you. Yeah. But now you know your backstory, you think, well, wait a minute, he's got a daughter who potentially needs that money mm -hmm. for, because the funding for that would be fucking thousands. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, helping your daughter out. So then you've got these thoughts. And then what happens is sometimes it's, uh, I lost at that, can yeah. then put you back in the streets. Yeah. And then can you imagine doing a life sentence just now? Yeah. And then you're in there, you've been fucked over, you've got a life sentence, you're away from your daughter. Yeah. And then that's, and that's how, it. That's how and fast that, it that's goes. That's how fast. And that's what you don't want to happen. And I'll tell you from now, bro, I am, I'm, I've grown up in prison. I can do 10 years again in prison now and just be calm. Do you know what I mean? And I don't want that to happen, but I've grown up. I'm, my mind is different. I've been in the block three, mu three months straight with just a mattress, nothing. So, and these are the things that I always battle with every single day and be like, the old school bounce can't come out. Like, do you know what I mean? Just to stay around practicing brothers, practicing Muslims, carry on praying. Do you know what I mean? Be, be around good people because I'm a good person and just try to block out anything, anyone that's trying to bring you to that, that, that space. So um, I'm proud of myself that I did it re retaliate, do you know what I mean? In certain ways and I done things the right way. And I took my, my anger out in a podcast, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, man, like, I, I, listen, I, 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 live in, I, live, I, live in, I live in London, do you know what I mean? I walk down the streets, I don't, I don't hide from no one, so. Uh, like, oh man, how did that, how did that relationship come about? Uh, my friend Smokes is in prison. And so like a man is a dwarf? Yeah, look and he was in and out of prison? Yeah, in and out of prison. But my friend Smoltz met him in prison. He said, oh, look, I've got someone here that that I reckon you'll do well with. Do you know what I mean? And then the whole story with me and him, building him up, get me, getting him on the front of the sun, getting Smoltz to record videos. You get me? Don't bear in mind, he had his own videos out. Do you know what I mean? That was going viral. But just me adding to it, making fake Instagram pages, fake Instagram pages going viral, do you know what I mean? If, if everyone, if, if, if it was so easy, anyone would have come with that idea, do you know what I mean? But no one did, apart from myself, so. Everything's always easy when something Yeah, everything's always easy. easy. I was going very, I was big anyway, mm -hmm. but no one did it come with that simple, mm -hmm. Well, there was a brotherhood with you because I've watched these videos and you've got to say he has a character and yeah, you, you that's, see that's, potential that's to be brother, something man. because that's, but I always have love for local yeah. man do you know what I mean man, that's man's brother man he's got he, he, he's best you get me I wish him all the best but I think everything's kind of worked out in favour for yourself because people see you're a genuine just hard working guy who's willing to fucking put his neck in the line and build people up but it's now starting to make you a bit colder towards it and not take as many risks but... no, take, not take too much risk <laughs> it? no more, no more people fucking man over but, no, but... <laughs> Do you know it? Um, like I said, um, I, it's progression, isn't it? Where, 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 where everyone's in um, good positions, you get me, to change um, more lives. So it's all good, man. So you had the fight between you and Arms. Shout out to Arms. I've yeah. got a lot of time for Arms. I like him, genuine guy Shout as well. Out like, arms, man. Absolute machine. Yeah. So when you had the dwarf fights as well, like, yeah. it kind of blew yeah. up and everybody watching it. Like, yeah. People do watch mad shit Listen, now. No one didn't believe. You see, when I invested that money, no one didn't believe in two doors fighting. I promise you that. But when I saw the production and how my market it did, everyone believed it. No one didn't think that man could pull it off, but man pulled it off. Do you know what I mean? So um, man created the history and, and even 
getting messages from like the dwarf communities just like look like you're the only one that's kind of created a lane for us and and you're not taking us for clowns you're not making up you're not making you're not making dwarf people look like a clown you're you're you've actually tried to create something for us to look like serious people and create um a lane do you know what i mean so that there touched me so I, as long as, as long as they see that and they and and do you know what I mean? They they know what my intentions was with that. That's that's the, all that matters. But little man looks as if he can scrap. He looks as if he could bang no out a fucking. Little man. He could no bang out a him. fucking. He probably bang yeah. out me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. fair play to him because did did you see a lot of sensitivity with him? Did you did you see a lot of his stuff as maybe a knack because he obviously had to go through. He's born a star. He's born a star. He's naturally a star. Do you know what I mean? Zero fucks You're around him. He, he's naturally a star. What's he, it like when the cameras are off? Yeah, he's just he's blessed. Do you know what I mean? He, he knows how to chill. He's blessed. You get me? And then when it, when the camera's on, he's just a natural. He's a naturally a star. He belongs in America, man. He go to America. They'll love him. I've never seen him cam. Every time when I done the press conferences and interviews, he was always just causing it, and I'm thinking, fucker. <laughs> that just absolutely caused that so when uh, that broke down as well yeah yeah that broke down are you thinking what the fuck's the point or did you just use that as fuel again to then try and kick on no like these people never think you man but it's just like remember before the social media knew me and little man stopped working like a year just over a year do you know what I mean so it wasn't nothing new but he was still fighting on the show I still close with his cousin super so this, the relationship's still there, but I understand obviously he, he had a fight that he needed to promote. So it made sense him jumping on the podcast and then it was like the way that Plus 4-4 kind of edited the podcast, it made it seem that clip that went viral. It was like, and then the fact the man's like, oh man takes 50%. The 50, there's no 50% of nothing. So like I, I, he's never, He's never been paid a wage and I've took 50% off. Do you know what I mean? All I've done is invest in him. His biggest wage has been from wicked and bad. And then the fact that people that are so like uneducated when it comes to um, fights, what people get paid. And even like I was talking to Aaron from um, Geordie Shaw and he's like, Bouts, like I fought at Bellator. I had 2.5 million followers and they paid me 12 and a half K. That's what they. That's what they paid me for my fight. That's not. That's and I fought at Bellator. But the fact that our our community they look and be like, oh, you paid my man this, and it's like that's not that. Like, hold on, I put on, I put a risk on with my own money, and I've invested X with investors, and both fighters received twenty percent of both of profits. So if it streamed more, you would have got paid more. But you just got paid what was in the contract. Do you know what I mean? And then the second fight, you get paid um, 1,500 £1, pounds more and that's a deal. So the eight and a half is not a deal. My friends said that you finessed me. And the, the 10K that your your new, like your manager got, is a deal. You're not complaining about that. Do you know what I mean? And then when you get, when you get contracts, contracts you're meant to send to lawyers to go through it. Everything. There's no record labels will send you a, a proposal and you just sign it on the spot. It's impossible. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's what happens. And to protect, look what man now, now owns his trademark. He owns he he's gonna own his trademark anyway. His Insta page. I owned his Insta page from when he came out. I handed it over, over to him from the get go. Do you know what I mean? So all these points, there wasn't um, that big big points, you know what I mean? It was just something that I needed to sort out with his manager, whether whether me and him had a little upset row or back and forth, but it, it just needed to get sorted out, do you know what I mean? So so that whole, um, oh, my man, my man's took 50% of look, man, I've took 50% of nothing. Cause when you, you go to prison or you become an internet sensation from prison, believe it or not, guys, Nike or Boohoo or any of these people don't want to work with you because they can't associate their brand with someone who's just come out of prison, who become big in prison. They don't look for their brand, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. And people don't understand, they don't look at the business side of things. Did you get a lot of shit with that clip went out when you said you got a lot owned, of owned his name and owned his Instagram and took all his money and I, I got look, a lot of people back to me a lot of business people backed me and I started realizing the people that are talking, they don't actually don't, they don't even know business. They don't even know that when they watch certain boxes on TV that they get paid between five 
hundred and a thousand per round. They don't even know that. Do you know what I mean? They just look at boxes on the TV and think that they're getting paid crazy money. So everything that I've done has been above board. Do you know what I mean? So, but then I, then I understand it's like, okay, cool. I, uh, I'm getting trolled by a 14 year old. Do you know what I mean? That's a fan of Little Man or that is, that don't like man because, do you know what I mean? Or, or the man's black community. Do you know what I mean? Because, okay, you've seen me grow. You've seen me on your level everyone supports and you see man climbing up and then all of a sudden we don't like this person look what they're doing to Molly May you get me anyone can say that anyone, anyone. I can say this now we all got the same 24 hours look yeah. what they're doing to her I've said it many you times know what I mean? you know what I'm trying to say so it's just pick and choose it's I literally... think that's sad like, I understand what, exactly what the girl's saying that like, Everybody has got the same 24 hours. Now, I know millionaires who have lost everything. I genuinely know homeless men who've become millionaires. Like, people get different starts. We get it. But you have got the same time to then go and make changes or then want to better your life. Like, there's opportunities there to be something in your life. And the amount of shit that girl got from that was unbelievable. unbelievable I, I, I couldn't understand it. It's like, do you know what I mean? So it's like, for me, but the, but it just makes, man, you just, then you know, innit? You just know, this is just, it just, it just happens, innit? You're just, when you start becoming, especially in the business world, when you start becoming a somebody, you just know, innit? And my thing, 2022, I just learned to like, just, I don't, I, I don't need to, why do I need to respond to everything? Just whatever, man. Just you know a bit of pride in it. It's, it's whatever. a bit of pride in yeah. it. Feels it's like, like whatever. Yeah. I walk down the road, you're going to say congratulations. You're not, no one on, no one face to face is going to come with no energy. Nobody me. ever does. No one ever does. Yeah. No one ever does. Mm -hmm. You get me? I know I've, I've walked past loads of, loads of trolls and they've just kept quiet. So, but, my thing is my intentions is pure in it, and everything that I do, I do it from the heart. Do you know what I mean? I do it for the will of, I do it for the will of God. I do it from the heart. So, um, for when you when you do that, you can't miss. You can't. God will keep on blessing you. Yeah. And no one can't stop that. They always keep on blessing you. So yeah. anyone with half a brain can see that. Fuck me! Like you've been in a prison your whole life. You've only been out for four years. Yeah. You're still learning yourself. Like, I'm still learning. I'm a human being, shit. bro. Remember, the people who are giving you shit are doing nothing with their life. People yeah. who are doing better than you don't give you shit. They don't care. People who are capable and well up for it, they don't go online and talk shit. They just sit back. Like I'm more scared of enemies that I don't hear from than the ones who are talking shit because I know they ain't got fuck all. You know, as soon as they put it on them, their asses claps. Like, this is just life. This is, but social media, as much as it builds up, it can also break people. No, of because getting negative messages, you, it's like reading a book, it's like feeding your mind that like you're not good, you're shit. You bump people and that's how you probably took the break because you're thinking, wait a minute, I've had these two big relationships break down. Is it me? Yeah. It's the fucking problem. Yeah. And then, but it's not even just that. There was loads of, so was, this year was just like a tough year for man, going back and forth with, with with people in the in 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 it last year, um, the arms fight. Do you know what I mean? Dealing with the arms fight, the trolls of that. That was fine because it's banter. Because it's like I know why I done it just to build a platform. You get me? I know why I done it. I built a platform. I got a black platform now for other fighters, and then just keep on having to like even with other stuff. You get me? It's like like there was like a scandal. There was like a scandal that went on with some scam. And it's like, in the newspaper, they, they they had all the celebrities, the top celebrities, you get me? And then on, on the streets, on the blog pages, they were playing with me. And just, you could just see it. And you're just like, look at, look at man's culture. This is this is what man's culture is doing. Do you know what I mean? But man's not going to give up. I'm going to show, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on showing, I'm going to keep on doing amazing stuff. And you're going to see, do you know what I mean? You're going to see. And and the fact that I don't ask, I don't ask no one for nothing. I just create content and just put it out. That's all it is, man. We're content creators. We're just trying to create a living. We're trying to create platforms. We're trying to show the way for other people that fuck me. Like if they can do it, if they can make changes, if they can create platforms, like even this podcast that gets viewed, we're nearly 100 million views. Like, and I'm only beginning. I've not even touched America yet. Like, this is only the beginning to where I'm fucking going. And it then leaves the majority of people watch your stuff and go prick. And then you'll get the people who see inspiration and go, do you know what? If he can do it, I can do it. Not just platforms or managers or creating brands or creating energy yeah. drinks, but anything can be created just for here. For long. It's your actions that then you want to jump on yeah. it. And if you can act on that, then you can truly fucking do what you want in life. Yeah. So it's life is a it's a fucking journey and a half, but a we live, we learn, we grow, brother. Yeah. That's all we can do. But That's it, how did the fight between you and arms come about? The fight of me and arms came about of local man. Um, people poisoned Lukoman, and he didn't want to. He he left the brand. 
you don't want nothing to do with um, the wicked and bad brand. So we didn't have no fighter. And I had a platform, me and my business partners, like, bro, we've got a platform, we have no fighter. And I'm like, look, I don't want to fight, but I'll, the only way I know that would go crazy if I called out arms or if I have arms in the meeting or, do you know what I mean? So I asked him about it and he wasn't really on it. And then he thought about it one time, he come to the, the, the to, to my gym and we spoke and I was like, look, yes, yes, yes let me call you out or yes, do, yes, do some pads. Yeah, I'm just bait to post, comment under the post and just create some hype around it. Do you know what I mean? And that's and then, and then obviously this is when we've done we've well done the contract the contract was signed and then we've created the hype and it's come out and people f thought it was real and 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 it sold. Do you know what I mean? It sold. Um, and obviously putting on a fight, yeah, putting on a fight, marketing everything you saw with that arms fight, yeah, putting on a fight and then training, yeah, mentally exhausted me. Having to be a promoter, a marketer, and be a fighter it exhausted me. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to like me going in the ring. I thought, yeah, that like, like now I now I know how it feels to be in there. I take my hat off to every athlete. You know what I mean? And people might say, oh, like I I wasn't too happy with my performance. You know what I mean? I wasn't happy. I, I felt like I should have been more in shape. I should have been a bit more fitter. But um. I've got a platform, we've created a platform and the message that we brought out was put down the knives. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Get in the ring and fight. It's and all right think that, bro, but you're not a professional fucking fighter. I know. Arms isn't a professional they fighter. Put us next, Do you know put, what I mean? Yeah. And it, you, you fought for 25 minutes. Yeah. Professional. Conor McGregor blows after fucking 10, 15 minutes. He's been training his whole life. Like When I done my boxing event, I thought I was training hard eight rounds of three, ten rounds of three, and then yeah. I only fought three rounds of two in the main night, yeah, and then um, yeah. I blew after the first yeah. two minutes. Crazy. Because it's nervous energy as well, it's tension, it's crowds, there's noise. Everything. Your, your fucking reputation's on the line. If you get sparked out, you're, you're fucked for years, you're mate. Forever. For that, anyway. Forever. So you're a meme for everything, yeah. so it's like, yeah, people can laugh and joke, but... Um, we have a platform and moving forward, you're going to love me for this platform because of the stuff that I'm thinking of and and... The stuff that I'm like I'm starting, like the stuff that the doors that's gonna open, like I'm doing like a contender, like a wicked and bad contender, where you have two coaches, two assistant coaches, ten fighters, two heavy um ten five heavyweights, five light heavyweights, one group team, the others, two gyms, and creating challenges. And then the, at the end they win a cash prize and they fight on the undercard of our main um wicked and bad fight that we're mm -hmm. planning right now. It's just business, bro. And it's, it's business. Content. That's how the UFC content. made it. The UFC was like 30, 40 million dollars in debt until they'd done the, was it the contender? or what was Ultimate it? fighter. The ultimate like, fighter. And that's yeah. what boomed it again. And they would just build it up. Yeah. And that's what it's going to do. And with me, I'm one man. So I'm doing everything myself. My business partner's doing all the logistics, but I'm doing all the planning and I have to think about everything. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, we're building something great. We're building, and I'm noticing. I'm here. I'm seeing that. Listen, these pro boxes, they're not getting the the promoters. They're not paying them proper money. So I'm building that platform where we're offering better, better, better money. So they can they can get suspended. Come fight on my platform. You'll see. You'll see this lineup that I, that I release, and you'll see the market, and you'll see who will be behind you, developing you, and making you big. And that's what you need. PR. Yeah, well, you see Jake Paul calling out the UFC, saying they don't pay enough wages. Like, they're making millions yep. each fight. Some of the fighters are only on 15 grand. Same as boxers. I know boxers that's fight for the British title. Remember, they've got fucking coaches to pay. They've got nutritionists. They've got their whole camp to pay. There's, some of them ain't even walking away with three, four grand and they're fighting for grand. British titles. I know. And that's what they're actually getting paid. But then someone will come on Instagram and come on someone's page and, like, you paid someone eight and a half grand or you paid someone 10 grand. And he's like, do you even know how much... Boxes get paid. What are you talking about? Yeah, I didn't realise the extent because I told him people Educate much, yourself. Yeah, I get paid for uh, my event. It was just, none of yeah. them are fucking professional, but I get paid five figures. And yeah. got, that's why I can understand why boxers hate those sort of events because yes. they've been training for fucking 10, 20 years and getting paid a quarter. A quarter. Uh, fucking Bulls, some guy bullshit. who's created a, a podcast is getting paid more than them. That yeah. is 16 ounce gloves, no really getting a hurt. But yeah. I can understand why they're fucking angry, but you can got to understand that I've got kids to feed. I don't give a fuck about anybody's yeah. opinion, man. I'm yeah. there to make money, create Straight. a brand, and just move on to the next event. Yeah, so it's just business, bro. It's just business. How was uh, How long did you train for the arms fight? Um, I trained. So 
obviously I'm 110 kg now. For the arms fight, I was 115, but I was 130, so 30 kg at total, and I'll just drop weight. Do you know what I mean? I was dropping weight. So I, I, it took me like nine months to train. I picked up so much injuries. I will got injury now. I can't even run in the running machine. I need to get an operation on my, my my leg. But that's what happens with the training. That's what happens. I understood it. Um, I take my hat off to MMA fighters, boxers, athletes. Do you know what I mean? I know how serious it is. Yeah, it's a serious fucking sport. Like yeah. You're going into an absolute monster. He's a mountain. He's um, a monster. He's a mountain. He does all the fucking... Uh, break dancing, backflips, side kicks, that you're going in yeah. there with four rounds club. So it doesn't matter if you don't think you put on a performance, whether you were fucking world class or not, you're going in there willing to get seriously fucking injured. Yeah, you get yeah. a knee to the head or an elbow to the head, you can potentially fucking die. I know. Do you know, I know what I mean? No, you're right. It's you fucking could potentially nuts, die. Yeah. yeah. That's and it. no one deeps that. But for me, it's all well and good. Everyone, like, you would laugh and be like, boom, what? No one's not going in the ring with arms if you're not a professional fighter or if you have a fighting background you're not going in the ring with arms yeah. do you know what I mean no, yeah. no one's not doing that mm -hmm. so that's the frustrating thing though because I was the same I don't make out as if I'm a professional boxer Yeah. but I'm, if somebody's got an event and somebody else is doing the same as me I'll go wow man that's unbelievable like, yeah. good luck uh, yeah. you'd look out for the result yeah. and you would go man that's amazing like, I genuinely feel yeah. that and think that like so when I start doing it and then I don't get that people go ah you're not a bottle fucking keep your hands up or do this and I'm thinking what yeah. you ain't a fucking coach like just say good luck just say <laughs> well done I just they can't help do you know what I mean people can't help and it, that, like. that's what makes you frustrated because when you have got goodness and you try to yeah. you do genuinely care that do you know what they're good in life like yeah. I don't fucking love everybody do you know what I mean but you genuinely want people to see them yeah. doing well and you see that that's different that you, people don't realise how hard that is like yeah. especially going into a camp as well being away from your family and thinking every day sparring every day is a fucking pain in the ass training every, two three times yeah, a day every day I used to think I used to sit outside the sparring and think I'm just going to text today and say nah I'm not going to come in but every time I end up going in yeah. I felt amazing after you feel like a man I think everybody that's maybe battling in life should maybe go and do some contact uh, combat sports because the yeah. feeling you get after it I've never had any experience after my fight like that buzz I can understand why yeah, boxers yeah. keep going and try to keep doing it because that adrenaline kick it's so mentally draining after it but you feel as if you've achieved something because yeah, we're definitely. hunters we're animals we're warriors at the end of the day and definitely, definitely. I kind of had a not a depression but a lull after it because I felt as if I never had a goal because I was training two yeah. or three times a day I was doing yoga running boxing yeah, yeah, and I yeah. felt alive now I know I'm only at 10% again yeah. because then I was fucking trying to run a podcast trying to make documentaries trying to train for a fight trying to promote the fight yeah, and, uh, yeah it was a lot it's it just, was a lot it was a lot I felt a burnout as well but that that's life like, last year I had an amazing year this year I'm going to go even bigger same yeah. as yourself like, yeah. we live we learn we grow and the people who then step back from you and think well fuck him then they still see you all we me and you have done over the last couple of years since I've been following yeah. you is went up yeah, yeah, and up yeah. and up there's never been any fault or there's never nah. been any decline yeah. there's been fuck all like that and yeah, that's, that's why I think like, this is only the beginning for you like, yeah. over the last four years you've learnt the hard way in a lot of things yeah. but just think of the fucking gold you've learned 100% do you know what I mean that's what's 100%. only going to make you a great manager and yeah. res people respect you like every interview you see you people even your documentary like, yeah. everybody speaks highly of you even nah, the, the kid dig that like, yeah. he, he was fucking speaking yeah. highly of you so the love is there but everybody's yeah. just selfish in a way where we yeah. want more and you, who says if you were 19 in that other kid's position you would have probably done the same yeah, many course, years ago of course because you're not thinking that way so like that. I always try and think away everybody else is thinking so no, I can understand course. that a bit more because yeah. we're all kind of fucking warped and, no of course do you know what I mean in a yeah. weird way like, but you're doing amazing and like I say you've got nothing but love and respect and I respect my boy. where do you go now for the future what's the plans sorry we'll touch on as as an artist, so people come into artists and get signed with labels. What? Yeah. How? How? How the fuck does all that work? Is it? Do they get twenty percent? Do they get half the money up yeah, front? Yeah, it depends. How? But the the standard um, the standard deal is just say for example, just to make it sound like so you understand. If I if I'm a label and I sign you for a mill, yeah, that is eighty in my favor, twenty to you. But we have to recoup in your twenty. So you have to then. We have to make five mil, yeah, from your one mil. That is, you've paid the all debt debt back because that's an 80-20. And then after that, 
for if if our deal was for twenty five years, for the next twenty five years, if another mill gets made, we take eight hundred k and you take two hundred k, and that's how it works until the and that's and that's how much that's how it works. Do you know what I mean? Until your 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 deal is up, and 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 that is slavery. Yeah, yeah. that is slavery. But no one. Artists sign deals every day. They get their advance, they sign deals, an advance that they have to pay back. So, um, yeah, but then everyone have an outcry of, oh, yeah, you, you, you've sat down with someone, you want to do a business partner, you want to go 50-50s, 50-50, and they're like, oh, my days, bounces. That's just life. That's it, man. There's promoters out there and boxers. They're not even fighting, but they're taking 70%. Boxers are only getting 30 and they're the ones risking their fucking life. Like it's, it's yeah, just, this is just pure business. So business. see if you're independent then at the start, it was at 100% profit. Yeah, depending if you've got distribution. So if you've got a distribution deal, you've got like a distribution company, they usually take 15 or 10 or 20% and you take 80%, but you own your music. Do you know what I mean? And they'll only take it for a period of until the advance is paid that they paid, that they gave you for like, and then three, two year or three years after. So a lot of people's going down the distribution um, independent route because obviously in the long run, you, you can accumulate and make a lot of money. Where do you think you'd have took Dig That if you stayed independent? Could you have seen you'd been yeah. millionaires just now? Yeah, Dig That, listen, Dig That would be, right now would be the biggest drill artist in the world. That's it, period. There would not there would be nothing else. He would be the biggest drill artist in the world. Has he ever tried it. to come back? Um, no. Nah, there, there, there's been no contact and it's just been like that, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and everyone we've just done I've gone we've gone our separate ways. What about for the future? Have you got anybody on your cars just now? Yeah, we've got we've Who got have some. you got? So I wanna um talk about Freezy. So okay. me and Freezy's working together. Um, I will just discuss Freezy for now. But the car's complete, do you know what I mean? And Freezy's, um, he's fighting someone, he's fighting another boxer. You get me? He's fighting another boxer. It's going to be something, a, a, a moment for the boxing world, um, for um, amateur boxers, for semi-pro boxers, for pro boxers. And you're going to see myself, you see what how I market these boxes. I don't need Sky Sports. I don't need none of these. You'll see how much I market these boxes and build up their storyline. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And everything's in contracts when they can walk away and fuck yeah, you over. Yeah, every, everything is, everything's always in contracts and everyone's always happy until people start going viral and then they're not happy. But it's like, if it's not a success, then they're still happy because they're, they're at the same place they were. But it's good but, then at the start because you can now tell them, look, this is where we are now. Please yeah. remember this. Like, I see when that. you eventually blow it, like, do not forget yeah, this Yeah, don't point. forget this. Because when you don't say that at the start, then yeah. they, f they don't know that. But you know things like content like this, we, yeah. we, will, we will bring this back. People will see this, we will bring this back. But I'm sure Freezy's a loyal brother and he's come through a lot of hardship, you get me? So he gets it. He gets when people are behind him, do you know what I mean? And I'm jumping in as in a promoter in the boxing world. In the in the MMA world, in that with that little gap when it comes to influencers and non influencers, so that's my lane. And obviously, I'm dip, I'm doing a little bit still with yeah. the music world. Well, I've actually got something. Somebody's want me to get involved in as well, man. I'll, I'll show you after this. Yeah. I'll not discuss yeah. it on this, but it could be something you could dip into, man. Yeah, like, definitely. You got to look at you look at the kids in Compton. You look at your Doctor Dre's. You look at fucking Easy E's. They came from nothing, and Doctor Dre's a, a, a billionaire now. Yeah. There's kids in the UK that can do the exact same. Who says you can't go down that yeah. lane and create that platform? Like people will say, oh. He's going into boxing but in five years time somebody's got you've got to start somewhere, got to start somewhere it's just man. when people don't see your vision or my vision or anybody's vision yeah, people yeah. can talk you out that vision because I've come Definitely. up with so many ideas and people spoke me out it and I think I should have never let that happen. happen now that's why I just create myself because I see the vision do it. yeah let's do it you're, do you know what you're, I mean? you're, you're a creative do you know what I mean yeah. all, me and you were creative so we put out our we put out what goes on in our head mm -hmm. no, no, no one can't think like us do you know what I mean? You think like how you think and how the way how you do it, and that's what makes you unique, just like myself. Yeah, so it's just keep creating and giving people platforms and, and just taking people where you can take them. Like I had a man on tonight, actually, it went live, uh, Greg Cannon. He was a, 
the lead detective on the Biggie Smalls and Tupac case that like, he's got nine got me leads in America and it's just I want to go to America and crack America yeah, nobody's amazing. done it yet I'm yeah. going to fucking do it like Definitely it's are. like 350 million people yeah. there it's a yeah. massive market get me watched... back on there still get me back on there <laughs> get, me get me back on yeah, there please promote the boxing but what about any artists any other artists you got in the pipeline or you just um, want to go down the boxing route big up my business partner Beans in LA they, they focus on the artist side do you know what I mean? They've, we've got artists. Um, we got. Do you know what I mean? We've got some um, artists that we're, we're developing. Um, we got Queenface a hundred times. You get me? He's um, one of the biggest drill artists that's coming through the scene now. Do you know what I mean? Um, Ed Sheeran brings him up all the time. Um, but yeah, man, um, we've we're, we're, we're working on a few things in that department. We're launching. Um, we're going live with another um, the Select Studio soon so and then you've got the bouncer hub music masterclass is what we're gonna go live with soon so a lot of artists and a lot of people will be able to get access to my myself and my team and we'll be a lot working like as a mentor and trying to help the culture grow because i've been out of it for a little while when it comes to music and i i, I just feel like everyone's kind of stuck you no know, one everyone follows the same blueprint and and this is what's happened. They don't know how to help, like, to grow um, an audience. So we're gonna, me and my team's gonna work. Um, we're gonna work soon. By next month, we will we'll have the website up and running. Mm -hmm. The mental health thing that you touched on a couple of times in the interview, but yeah, how how's that just now? Every day, I, you you get me. Everyone's I, everyone every day. Um, I go through it. Do you know what I mean? I wake up at four in the morning. I go through it, but. I'm fine within myself. No one, no one, no one will ever break me. But um, I just go through a lot of trauma that I'm in the process of talking to a therapist um, and just get me, just helping me get through life. You know what I mean? Just from um, the stuff that's happened in my life and being in prison and coming out and getting a following and listen, guys, I'm a human being. I know you, I have a following, but just chill out. You know what I mean? Sometimes just chill out, but get me obviously I ask for this so I have to deal with it do you know what I mean so yeah I have a good great support system so all good yeah. but look how far you've come brother fuck yeah. me mate yeah. for Robin so Banks to fucking creating fucking live events boxing events MMA events like your own energy drink yeah. the kids you've you brought into the network of music industry and got them t top 20 singles and made them stars like that's unbelievable. And anybody that doesn't realise that, fuck them, brother. <laughs> fuck them. Like, <laughs> they don't deserve your time. They don't deserve your thought process. They do not deserve your energy. Fuck them. Like, that's just the way it is. Like, it's so hard. I know it's okay for me to say because, um, but don't ever forget how far you've came and everything you've created in such a short period of time. If you can create that in four years, what's it going to be like in 14 years? Oh God, you've crazy. got your own fucking industry. You've got your own record label. You've got your own energy drink that's popping with everybody yeah. then you've got then full control of who you can make and who you can break that like, instead yeah. of try to make somebody and it's you it seems yeah. to break after that like yeah yeah obviously you've built up enough you don't become immune to pain as human beings are always going to feel pain we're always going to feel the hurt and yeah. getting stabbed in the fucking back like, that's just life we, we don't like it but it is life listen it's going to keep happening to you yeah we can't distance ourselves from it there's always somebody that you think they're a diamond 100 percent, and fuck me that's the one that ends up breaking your heart the most because yeah. you put so much trust into them yeah it's yeah, just life yeah. bro that like, i don't ever think because i try and distance myself from it that's why i do a lot of stuff myself because I, i'm I, I, i'm sick of feeling pain yeah. i'm already in pain yeah, yeah why fucking add to it and then you then it makes you question everything you're doing because sometimes i think well fuck it man just step back get a 95 That'll last maybe an hour or two, and I think, nah, yeah, fuck yeah, that, yeah, mate. I've yeah, got my yeah. freedom. I can go on nice holidays. I've got nice things, and I want more of that. And for me yeah. to get more of that, I need to do what everybody else can't. And that's push through the pain, push 100%. through the misery, and just keep chipping away. That like, we'll give a shout out to Tyrone as well. That like, wow, love him to bits, to man. Tyrone, man. Fucking We've legend. We've got some big things planned with Tyrone, so big. He's shout a monster. Out to him. I wouldn't like to fucking yeah, fight man. him, man. Yeah, he's a monster. He's a fucking yeah. monster. And he's flying on social yeah, media. Every flying. time I'm on TikTok, man, he's on live. Yeah. He's, he's just him up, man. everywhere, mate. Yeah. Love him to bits. And um, then going forward for the future, we've got everything else in place. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? In the next five years, 
Where do I see myself? I see myself still doing the same things, still this on the same. I see out the bar will be raised. Do you know what I mean? The companies will be made. We can embed energy drink, the merch, the platform. Everything will be grown. But I will still be on the streets helping. Do you know what I mean? That's that's that's. I'm a worker. I'm a soldier. That's what I like to do. I like to help. So, um, just progression, health, success. And trying to change a few more people's lives. I know there's going to be more people. And I'm saying Freezy will be someone that the whole world will see him with me behind him. The whole world will be see him. I've seen his graft. I've seen him post a thousand. He's post a thousand posts on his Insta. Watch, watch when I'm finished. Watch when I'm finished with him. You'll see Freezy, Matt Bone. Get ready for him. Yes, Freezy. Is um. What about, would you ever have another fight? No, nah, I don't think I will have another fight because I think that my worth and my creativity is the guy behind the scenes that's pulling, that's creating the stories, that's making things come to life, that's making things that my, like my fighters, they need me. They need me to develop them, that they need me to build up their career. To after even when they leave and they go to um, training, what they want to do next, you know what I mean? So... That's what I want to do to give back. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I've seen a couple of people speaking about you, and you are always telling them you're a star, you're a fucking legend, like yeah. you're drilling it into them. Ain't it funny that I I do that with people as well? I do that with my kids especially, but sometimes I don't do it with myself. Yeah, fucking self doubt, and I, I think, know. man, fucking practice what you preach. preach and then sometimes it? I think I'm a fraud. Then sometimes <laughs> I think I'm just talking absolute yeah. shit. But I just want more. I know what I'm capable of yeah. and I know what I can achieve. I know what legacy I can leave. Like, I'm here to change the fucking game of interviewing. Yeah. Like, the plans and visions that I've got over the next three to five years, I'm going to be bringing the biggest interviews on this fucking planet. Yes, you've got this. And then I can sit back and just go, do you know what? Part of me wants to do it, not just for me, but so I can say, fucking told you so. Yeah. Part of me, that's still a bit Done. of ego, just to stick your finger up and go, fucking told you. Like, Straight. Because nobody sees the laughing and the, the finger point. When I first started podcasting, People were calling me a snitch and were calling me this and were calling me that. I was just interviewing people. I just yeah. wanted to make change in my life yeah. and, and I started getting a lot of hate. And I thought, now the tide has turned. Now people know I'm trying to do good. And yeah. I, I think after people watch you long enough after six months, they know who you are as an individual yeah, because yeah, people's masks kind of slip after three, six months. Yeah. Like, I've never broke, I've They'll never They'll push followed. every narrative about you and then yeah. they realise it's not working mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, actually, I rate my man. Yeah. And it's a good thing, man, because we all want to be like, but... Would you like to finish up on anything, brother? Um, literally, man, I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah, you get me? Obviously, um, for myself, it's important to spread um, Islam, do you know what I mean? Um, that's what's kept me sane and the brothers that I'm around, you get me? The brothers from Zen Lounge, um, brother brother H, Saleh, Troy, do you know what I mean? These, so I just, I just want to... Um, just leave it like that, do you know what I mean? And obviously, um, we all sin, do you know what I mean? We all make mistakes, but religion is important, do you know what I mean? Um, doing good, trying to give um, charity. So um, thank you to everyone that supports me, um, everyone like that supports me, that's behind, man. And yeah, man, I have the best intentions. Do you think having a religion behind you has made you forgive quicker, especially over the last four years? Yeah, it, of course it does. It, it, it tries to pra teach you practicing of like forgiveness, you know what I mean? And having a clean heart. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, of course, man. What is all your social media links as well, brother, for people to maybe get in contact with you? Uh, Bouncer Play Dirty. Um, I've got TikTok now. It's Same, mate, it's popping, yeah, man. Me. Yeah, man. Fucking popping, that Bouncer TikTok's Play unbelievable. Dirty on that. Obviously, I've got Twitter. I don't use it as much. I've got Snapchat, Bouncer Play Dirty, but the real big bouncer. And yeah, LinkedIn, Miles... Bouncer Harris, so I want to connect with some business-minded people. If you look me on link, LinkedIn, just let me know what you do and just connect because I'm always looking to work. For anybody that's maybe going through a struggle just now, you've been there yourself, what advice would you give for them? Um, look, you've seen, I've spent, I've done um, 10 years of my life in jail um, and I've managed to change it around. Consistency, you know what I mean? Consistency, changing your, um, your friend circle, and never giving up. People might laugh at you. They might laugh at you. They might not understand your journey. And just keep on staying consistent. You get me? And, and keep on an asking. Keep on an asking until a door opens. And then it. Um, and just try to be around good positive energy. Good energy. 
You know what I mean? Try to be around. Energy is very important. You know what I mean? And try to think different. Try to think you're amazing. You're going to make money. You're going to be healthy. You're going to change. Your family's going to be proud of you. You're going to change so many people's lives. So, yeah, man, that's what I will say to them. And everyone, anyone that's in incarcerated in prison, you can change it. But I can do it. You can do it. Do you know what I mean? And just get focused. Educate yourself. Maybe come off social media a bit more. Look at YouTube clips. Educate yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Brother, nothing love but love, bro. mate. Don't ever forget bro. how far Bless you've it, come, mate. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Bless nothing Bless but love and respect. And I Thank can't wait to see me. what you do for the future. Come on, my bro. God come bless on, you, man. brother. Yo, my people. Yes. <laughs>